What's up, Jiu Jitsu? -er? Michi here with you again. Today we've got another technique courtesy of my friend John Evans from BJJ Breakdown. John is the owner of Breakdown Academy and the Jiu Jitsu analyst from BJJ Breakdown, where he breaks down competition footage. In this video, he goes through a nice setup to transition into a tight arm in guillotine submission. Let's do this. All right, so today we're going to look at a arm in guillotine. Uh, a lot of different names for this one, but typically what we'll do is we'll hit this off of a front head and arm or front head lock uh, after a failed takedown attempt and, and a good sprawl from me. Um, we'll lock up the front head and arm, blocking the triceps and getting a chin strap with my hand here, putting the chin right in the middle of the palm. With a front head lock, there's a lot of different ways you can make the grip. We can do a C-clamp grip, we can do a gable grip, or we can get our guillotine grip. Uh, all of those are fine, they're all personal preference. I'm sure that some wrestlers would probably be uh, very adamant about the grip that you should have, but uh, for submission purposes, it's not quite as important. It's more of a personal preference thing, as long as we can lock the hands together. Uh, the next important part to this is that we want to get this elbow across the body, right? So you'll commonly see this when from this front head and arm, front headlock, we're trying to come over for the high elbow guillotine, right? So I'm, I'm covering the chin and maybe I have my front headlock. I'll go back to my chin strap and I'll try to get this arm through and get a high elbow guillotine. But uh, a lot of times your opponent will be savvy to that and they'll start bringing this elbow up so I can't get it in, right? They're shrugging the shoulder, they're bringing it up, I can't get this in, they're forcing me to stay with this underhook. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take advantage of this position because his elbow's up, he's trying to stop this hand. We're gonna lock up the front headlock again quickly and we're going to tuck this outside forearm in. And this drives, this puts him in a bad position. It drives his, his upper arm across his neck. So once we have the arm across, now we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, there's a lot of different variations that people will use to set this head and arm guillotine up. But the, the problem with a lot of them is that it gives your opponent time to get this arm back, right? So, when I tuck this arm in, immediately I want to keep it there. Because if I try to jump right to a guillotine with this head and arm in, yeah, he'll open up this elbow and we'll lose the grip. So when I tuck this across, I want to start now driving into my opponent. And if you can, either use your forearm or you can cup the, the triceps right here and pull it, keep it pulled across his neck. As we're driving in, it starts to seat him up a little bit. Now we can get up onto our feet and really shove this knee right in here. Once we shove the knee across the body, this locks in the triceps. So we have the head and the arm, just like a head and arm choke. Right? Now it's locked in and he can't pull it out. Go ahead and pull it out, Andre. My thigh locks in this arm. So once we're here, now we can sit back to our normal guillotine. We'll sit back and we want to sit to our side, just like a regular guillotine from guard, right? We don't want to be flat on our back. Although this one is a little bit more forgiving uh, in that regard because we have the head and arm together, we could probably still finish, but on the side is always preferred. If you can, I like to lock the half guard hook, but it's not necessary. We still want to throw this leg over the back to prevent him jumping to the cross side and just to secure the lock better. And then I like to pull down with this leg. Brings my hips off the ground, puts the weight in his back, and then crunches him forward onto his head. My arm is in between his head and his, uh, his shoulder over here is also pushing into his neck. So when we push down with the leg, it brings all the weight onto him and we're just gonna pull our elbow through. It's like we're trying to trace a J, right? So I'm just rotating the elbow through. So from here, I'm gonna pull up and in, hips up, and squeeze, and we get the blood choke from the arm in guillotine. In review, we start from a front headlock position. Stuff your opponent's elbow across their neck, drive into your opponent, step up and shove your knee across their body and lock in their head and arm. Sit back into your side, 
lock a half guard hook, hook your other leg over your opponent's back, pull down with your top leg and lift your hips. Turn your elbow in as you pull up and squeeze to finish the choke. Let's check out some other angles. BJJ Breakdown is something that I originally started because I was getting injured occasionally in training and I'd have to sit out and you can drill sometimes depending on what injury you have but uh, it just always felt like I wasn't making the best use of my time. So uh, I started watching a lot of tournament footage and trying to analyze what the top guys were doing and seeing if I could find patterns or certain new techniques. Um, and I realized when I was doing that, I'd been training for probably about four or five years at the time when I first started doing that, uh, that that was a skill that I kind of acquired fairly recently at that time. Um, and because I remembered watching the worlds when I was maybe about two and a half years into training and I watched uh, two top level guys, I think it was the finals, uh, black belt, I'm not sure what weight class it was because it was a long time ago. Uh, but I, I had no idea what was going on. I was there, <laughs> I was with my friends. Some of them were like, oh yeah, you should go for this pass or you should go for this submission. And I just had no idea what was going on whatsoever. Uh, and it was very frustrating. I felt like I had been training and dedicating my life to this sport for years at that point and I still didn't know what was going on. Uh, so then eventually, a little bit later, when I did know what was going on, I started to watch some more video and think like, wow, I really know kind of all of these things that they're going for, or at least most of them. And so I thought I should find some way where I could impart that to newer uh, jujitsu trainers that maybe were going through the same struggle that I was going through initially as well. So uh, I decided I, I'm spending my time while I'm injured watching these videos, I should be putting some commentary over them or something. So that's the way BJJ Breakdown, the YouTube channel, started. So my main thing that I do there is I do commentary. I will put commentary over pretty much any video. Uh, you got some kids rolling around in the schoolyard, I'd probably commentate over that uh, if it's at all jujitsu related. But uh, for the most part, it's high level jujitsu. It's black belt uh, divisions for maybe ADCC or uh, IBJJF tournaments, but any tournament really, uh, all the way down to white belt, brand new competitors, because I feel like you can learn something from everyone, uh, as long as you're watching it with a discerning eye. So um, that's the main thing that you'll see if you go to the BJJ Breakdown YouTube channel. But we also do things that we're starting to branch out now with, uh, we're showing technique videos, and um, eventually we'll hopefully have uh, highlights and news and, and things like that. So. Thank you, John, for the submission and for looking like Captain America. And thank you to Jiu-Jitsu for checking out this video. If you want to see some more from John, here's another video you might like. And also check out the BJJ Brain for cutting-edge training software for grapplers. In the meantime, live life, have fun, and train Jiu-Jitsu.